Hi, Dr. Charles here, and today I'm going to give you five things that have the potential to really fix ED and maybe even cure it. Just as a disclaimer, this is not medical advice. This is purely informational. Even though I am a board certified doctor, I'm just here to give you all the information that I know so you can make the most informed decision when speaking with your doctor. So let's jump right into it. What are the five things that can potentially fix ED and maybe even cure it. To start with the first one, it may seem a bit easy and maybe esoterical, but it has to do with relieving anxiety. You see, the first time you notice you start to develop ED, it becomes a bit like a vicious cycle. Anxiety will actually inhibit the main component that starts your erection in the first place, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, which will eventually lead to NO in the penis or nitric oxide, allowing you to get an erection. Now, the way anxiety blocks this is that if you are anxiety provoked, you have an activation of what's called the sympathetic nervous system, which is needed later on in the erection, but not needed to initiate it. See, the parasympathetic nervous system is really the only thing that can organically initiate that nervous system. And if you have the sympathetic system on while you're trying to do that, you really won't get an erection in the first place. Now, a lot of men with ED do have problems with anxiety because if you have this in your mind that you may not get an erection, obviously that provokes anxiety, it spikes cortisol and your sympathetic nervous system, further exacerbating the problem, which is why it's very important to practice regular relaxation techniques such as meditation or breath work. So two, and probably the most common known way to help fix ED, and that is the little blue pill or the blue chews. Now, while these pills are extremely effective in the short term, they may actually have long-term side effects you should be aware of. However, they do have incredible impact if you need to take it on a whim. Some of the other benefits of taking this pill is it actually will help you lead to NO in the body, which we know is needed for an erection. There are, however, contradictions in addition to the long-term consequences of taking any medication long-term, so you wanna make sure to chat with your doctor before going into medications. Number three, and this one is a little bit iffy for me, but it does work, and that is the penis pump. This is where an incision takes place at usually the base of the penis, and a small pump is inserted to allow you to get an erection where the pump is placed underneath your scrotum or somewhere in that area to allow you to pump it up when you need to have an erection. However, the problem with this is it is an invasive procedure, and some men report not even be able to use the pump even after three weeks post-procedure about 50%. And while it is a way to actually achieve an erection, it is not the organic way, and it has been complications which are normal complications associated with surgery. Number four. Number four is another esoteric one, if you will, and this is diet and lifestyle. There are a number of papers which are looking diet and lifestyle to artery disease. Now, why artery disease is so linked to the penis and to erections is because blood flow is the major component to allow you to get an erection. Now, if you impede your blood flow, the same way you would impede it in the heart, you would get a heart attack. If you impeded it in the brain, you would get a stroke. Well, if you impede it in the penis, you just simply don't get an erection. So how can we help to mitigate this? And this is really diet and lifestyle. Diet and lifestyle have a huge part to play in this, so you really don't have to do much. In fact, this one study that came out showed that you really only need to sweat one to three times a day at one to three minutes in order to get the actual effects of exercise and exercise endurance. Now, this is just a single study, which we posted here for you. It does show the benefits of at least sweating once a day in an effort to help you improve your cardiovascular system. The other thing which I really like in lifestyle is intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has been a great way to help control glucose and blood sugar, which has also been linked to artery disease. And we'll post another study with that down below. And so finally, the fifth and my personal favorite way, and one of the most promising things for ED is stem cell and exosome therapy and things like the P-Shot. Now, while these things are still considered relatively experimental, there are a number of patients who are reporting positive benefits in doing this kind of procedure. Now, the biggest thing and the thing that makes me the most excited about this is it has the potential to actually get to the root cause. Now, what do I mean by that? When you have a penis that's not getting an erection, usually you have some long-term or chronic damage to the arteries and or nerves. Well, when doing things like an advanced P-shot or stem cells and exosomes, you may have the potential to actually get to the root cause by stimulating a process called angiogenesis or new blood vessel growth. And we'll put some papers down below also talking about how stem cells and exosomes may cause a process called angiogenesis. And while PRP 
is an incredible benefit. PRP normally does contain only growth factors and a small amount of stem cells, but in my opinion, at least it attempts to address the root cause. So these are the five things that I think are the most prevalent out there for ED. There are a couple others, but these are ones that are most widely used and the ones that we're using in our practice. So if you're interested and you'd like to learn more or speak to someone, click the link in the description down below, or if you'd like some more information, click the video on screen now. We'll see you soon.